So welcome to Techno Dad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we have something very special for you. So we're going to show you how to install and set up NZB Get. And so if you don't know, NZB are files that are downloaded from private servers. It is much safer than BitTorrenting. And so as part of this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is three things. So number one, we're going to be setting up NZB Get. Number two is we're going to show you how to add servers to it so that you can use it. And number three is actually downloading NZBs. And so if you like this video today, make sure you like. And if you haven't already subscribed, then here we go now. And a special thank you to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started. So first you want to go to Docker on the left-hand side. Click on Docker. We're going to go to the right side and we're going to type in the box nzbget. And we're going to click on the first one for us, which is Linux server slash NZB get. Click on that. Click the I for information. Scroll down to the information section. So two things. So in the architecture section, so we're going to be using the x86. Uh, and so we don't have to do anything. If you're using a Raspberry Pi, you want to use the ARM HF. And so then in the box, you're going to put ARM32 version 7 dash latest. And then we're going to scroll down to usage where we're going to look at this. So we're going to put in our PUID, our PGID, our time zone, uh, our ports, uh, configuration, so our app data, and our download section. And then also we need to put restart always. So next we're going to press start and that will download. Once that's done, click close. Next we're going to go to shell in the box. We're going to click web client, advanced and proceed. We're going to log in as root and our password. And we're going to type in ID and our username. For me, that's user one. So for user one, the UID is 1000 and the GID is 100. Please write that down. Next, we're going to go back to Docker. Click on Linux server. And if you have more than one, you can just pull this over like that. And there you can see it says NZB get. Click run image. We're going to call this container NZB get. Restart policy, uh, you can either put always or unless stopped. We're going to leave it in bridge mode. We're going to expose port 6789. Then hit the plus sign. We're going to put PUID, which for us was 1000. Hit the plus sign. PGID. which for us was 100, and we'll put that in the plus sign. Then we'll put TZ, and for me, it's America and New York. Then hit the plus sign. Next, we go to our container, we'll hit slash, and then config, and we need to make a config file first. So we'll go to our server, go to app data, create a new file called nzbget, our new folder, excuse me. And then we can close that. And then here we're going to click on the folder, shared folders. And there's our nook and app data, nzbget. Click OK. And then hit the plus sign. Next we're going to hit slash again. And downloads. And we're going to go to our shared folders. Click on Downloads and just click OK and then hit the plus sign. And then we just need to press Save. 
Okay, so next what we're gonna do is copy our IP address. Paste that here. And then we're gonna backspace and then colon 6789 and then hit enter. And if you, I've actually logged in once already. If you end up getting it, needing a login password, what you go back to is the doctor, Docker explanation. Scroll down. And so what you'll hear, see under application setup, it has the login is nzbget and the password is tegbzn6789. And all this is is NB, nzbget backwards along with the 6789, which is what we logged into. Okay, and so now your nzbget is open and what we have to do is make it so you can actually download things. And so we're going to go to settings and I'll just go to what we actually need. So we don't need about uh, system, don't need to change anything there. Web interface, that's okay. Pass we already set when we made the Docker. And if we go to servers, this is where we want to put in things. And so you can have in have more than one server. So basically a server is where you download uh, your NZBs from. And so there's a couple of things you need to do here. So first you need to sign up for a Usenet service. And so the one I use is Usenet server. And there's a couple of reasons why I did this. It has a VPN that you can use for anything, but we actually don't need it for this tutorial. Uh, the other thing is, is it's not very expensive compared to the other ones. And it has actually a greater download speeds just from what I saw. Uh, if you don't have a Usenet service, uh, please, there's a link in the below. Uh, check in the description below and I'll leave a link to this. And by using that link, you do help support the channel. So thank you. So once you sign up for that, then you will get an email which will give you uh, your server and then your username and password. So first we want to put in a name for our server. And we want to leave this as active. So whatever one is active is the one that gets picked first. And then you have a priority level there. Zero is the first one. For host, we're going to put in the host name that they sent us in the email confirmation for our provider, or it usually has it on its website. We're going to use port 563. That's the encrypted port. And you're going to put in your username and password. We're going to turn on encryption. So then our data is encrypted back and forth between the server. And then once we've done all that, you press, press test connection. And there you can see the connection was successful. And then next, what we want to do to see if we can actually download anything. So first we're going to go to the bottom left corner and we're going to click on save all changes. And then we click on reload NZB get. Okay, so how do we download something? So there is a couple different ways, but we'll show you the easiest way first. So we want to add an NZB file. And so here you can add from a URL or drag and drop local files. So what we're going to do is go back to our Usenet server. And so we're going to type in something. And so there's a couple of different things you want to know about this page in particular. So you, ha you can download by subject group or who it's posted by. Uh, but what we really want to do is look over at this area. And so from our from and to date, so it's going to stop with today's date, but our from date will limit how many things or how far back it goes. And so if we put a down error here, you can go from 
yesterday all the way to the max. We're going to type in Ubuntu and then click search. If we do it just in the last 30 days, nothing comes up. And there you can see we get different Ubuntu files. So we're just going to pick one and then what we're going to do is press the quick download. And you can see it ends up right there. When we go back to our server, our NZB get server, we can just pick up that and drag it and drop it in there and then click submit. And you can see down here over on the right hand side, it shows it's downloading. It also actually shows up here in the top left. Uh, so generally these servers are pretty fast. And you can see it's just taking a few minutes to download, which is much faster than a BitTorrent and actually much faster than the regular Ubuntu website even. And that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful and make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.